Hello, welcome back to The Jumpers. So, I've done something a little bit different um, with how I'm recording these episodes. So, since we're starting out, there's a lot of tedious and boring parts of it that are just no fun to watch for anybody. So, what I've done is I've recorded um, a few craft that I've built and tested and essentially gotten some science off them, uh, then with a bit of a commentary track over the top of them. So, while we're starting out, this is the best way to get news to you guys of what the space program is actually doing. Um, so, to start off with, we have the wonderful science plane we constructed last episode. That was amazing. Then we have the Orbiter 1 and the Orbiter 2. Much the same um, in design, just science equipment has changed out, but you'll see those in a moment. Um, but one thing I wanted to do to at least make the episode not as... Um, as pre-recorded as possible, so I decided to try and do the um, Escape the Atmosphere um, contract. But before we get into those, I want to show you the, the science plan we made last episode, because I'm pretty excited on how this actually works. So here it is. Alrighty, so here is the space plane we decided to create. Uh, I did have to make a few changes to it, because after a few test flights, it just wasn't working. Nothing would fly correctly it was always out of balance it just was not fun to, to fly so I've added a service bay just behind the cockpit to store the unaerodynamic um, science experiments so with the mysterious goo the standard cardboard ones the problem with the cardboard ones I didn't realize at the time is their one-time uses I didn't expect to have to constantly redo flights to get more science I was hoping to just do a once one only flight to just fly around Kerbin, get as much science as I possibly can, return, start unlocking things and making bigger, better planes. But, I mean, that kind of felt a little bit OP, having pretty amazing amounts of science equipment from the get-go, when really you're not quite ready for that kind of stuff when you're just starting out in this type of situation. But it doesn't matter too much. I did a bit of science um, flying around, um, beat some world record distances from KSP, or KSC rather, um, but all in all, it was a pretty good flight. After a while, the, the plane became more responsive as more and more fuel was burnt off. Um, it it probably only has about a 120 kilometer range, so it's not a long distance aircraft. It's more of just a short hop to the other, co other continent and get some science and fly back if we're lucky. Um, I did end up with about a quarter of the fuel left after flying um, to the to the was it west side of KSP? No, it's north side. North to the north of KSP, uh, and then back through the mountains, back to a landing spot. Um, now, one problem I did face after I took off when you saw it at the start there is the runway is incredibly bumpy. It is impossible to have a stable flight on. It it just doesn't work. So. As I'm coming in, I decide I'm not going to land on the runway because this is a bit of a delicate craft. I'd rather just get it on the ground, get the science, and do another flight if I have to. So, washed off some speed, uh, turned off my engines, and set my parachute to deploy. So, we're coming in pretty hot, um, flaring up, which pretty well. Parachute's opened, and there we go. On the ground, ready to get the science back. Easy freaking peasy. Okay, so the science plane itself was really fun to build and fly. It worked out really well. Um, now let's go back to the contract we were on. We just fall under the maximum amount allowed. Um, so we want to start these rockets up first. Uh, they will be ditched, then that one, middle stage will start. Uh, then that one will ditch, and then this engine will start. And then hopefully there'll be enough fuel left over to use this last stage as a slowdown mechanism, and then we'll just pull our parachute in the last um, last bit. Um, so we'll just call this one Space Hopper. That's all it's really doing, is it's going up to space and going back down again. So we're under our part count, under our um, weight limit, get rid of that, even, even less weight. Alright, launch. Here we go. The only problem I face with this is I don't have any SAS, or any kind of... Uh, ability to keep the aircraft or the spaceship stable, which it's not really a big problem because all I oh I do have SAS. Where did SAS come from? Oh, I lied. I do have SAS. Okay, well off to space we go. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Ooh, come on, turn back. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Come on. 
There you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. Don't do this to me now. Alright, let's just straighten this out before we ditch the stage, because I'd rather not go into space sideways. That's what she said. <laughs> Alright, ditch that stage. Let's go. Going up again. Perfect. Here we go. So this stage should hopefully push us high enough and out of the atmosphere. Um, I'm a bit skeptical because after that first stage problem, I don't know if it will or not. Oh no, I reckon it will. I reckon it will. Now that I'm arguing with myself, I think it will. Did you ever die? It's back? I thought he died. How did he get... I... Th I'm stumped as to how Jebediah made it back into my space program. That makes zero sense to me. I think because I have... No, I turned off returning crew members. Okay, I'm stumped there. I really am. I truly am. Alright, we're going to space now. We're definitely high enough. Let's cut the engine off, save some fuel for a slowdown. Alright, here we go. So, contract complete. We better see... We bet. We set a speed record. Fantastic. And all my stages were destroyed, costing me about two grand each. So, six grand down the drain. That's fine. All I have to do now is just reach now to 70,000 kilometers. There we go. Done. Let's get a crew report. 10 sites. Oh, yeah. All right, after I got to 70 kilometers, fantastic. As well as escaping the atmosphere. Awesome. Now I just need to get up to space and back down again. Um, now, I will need to use this engine to slow me down, I reckon. Um, we'll just start burning it slowly, so... What happened now? Yeah, it's fine. So, just so we're not going in too fast. How much fuel do I have left, though? Not a lot. Alright, let's just... Bring it down a little bit, a little bit more. I think I'm going to need to slow down even faster than this, but... We'll slowly go in, very slowly. Very, very slowly. Again, that's what she said. Alright, here we go. Alright, let's... Oh, God, I'm coming in really fast. Thousand kilometers a second. That is... That is bullshit fast. That really is. I think I'm going to have to cut the engine in a minute. Otherwise, I'm just going to burn up. Oh, sure. If I just do one quick last burn... There we go. That should slow me down enough. And if I use this engine to get even closer to the ground... Now, it's unsafe to deploy. Well, hopefully it becomes safe soon, because I'm not going to be able to... Oh, Jesus. Risky, safe. Alright, here we go. Oh, come on, slow down. Don't crash now. Oh, didn't crash. That's good. That's very good. That's very good. Wee! <laughs> I'm still surprised as to why Jebediah is back. That makes zero sense to me. I'm. I really do not know why or how he returned from my space program after he died. He definitely died. I have the video to prove it. He is dead. He splashed down hard. Again, that's what she said. But the point is, he's dead. How is he alive? Before we figure out Jeb's fate, I'll quickly show you the Orbiter 1 spacecraft made before. So this this spaceship was actually really fun to, to build and fly, but you'll see a few issues when we get to it. Alrighty, here is my Orbiter 1 spacecraft. It is by no means an orbital capable craft in the slightest. It is a very basic, pointing into space, fiery end to the ground, it does fly surprisingly well in the first couple stages, but the last stage it just turns into a spinning top. It is just impossible to control once the, the, it flames out, but even before then it just slowly starts to lose control. But it doesn't matter, because all this craft had to do was get science and get back down again. It had no kind of expectation to get into orbit, even though it was called Orbiter, I didn't expect it to go any higher than what it is now. Um, but I did have to tweak the parachutes because I wasn't too sure if they would slow it down enough. But it turns out it slowed it down just fine. I got my science and all was well in the world. Freaking fantastic. And now it is back to deciding Jeb's fate. I'll call this Jeb's coffin. 
Because he's dead. He he died. He shouldn't have come back. I don't know what setting I've left on by mistake for that to happen, but I'm going to make things right. I'm going to take him out of the space program. Um, so let's get him off the runway. There we go. There we go. Easy, 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 easy. Alright. I won't go full forward because that will probably cause problems. That will probably cause problems, yes. Yes, indeed. Where does the runway go slanty? There it is there. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Alright, let's get far enough away from KSC that we won't cause loading problems when we, when we join in. Or when we start, rather. Um... I've no way of telling how far away I am. I think at the edge of this thing here is about two kilometers. Oh, I'm going about a hundred kilometers, a hundred meters a second, so... Oh, God. Well, it served its purpose. Jeb's no longer in the space program again. <laughs> he wasn't even alive another minute. That's ridiculous. Um... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I did I really don't expect for him to explode like that, but really he was he wasn't meant to be there and oh. Alrighty, so that is essentially a test of this kind of template, if if you will, for this type of video. I found it a lot easier to record than um, just straight out playing the game. So it works out easier for me to do it this way, but if it's preferred to do it uh, watching me and record at the same time rather than editing these things in, then I will do that. Otherwise, um, I can keep it this way. So I'll need your feedback on this one if you'd like this type of template. Given it was a test, it was a little bit jumpy, a little bit all over the place. I understand that. I tried my hardest to try and fit it into certain areas without it making, making it jump all over the place too much. So again, let me know your feedback if you like this type of template. Um, and whatnot, but yes, uh, I'll leave it here showing off the Orbiter 2 launch, um, and yes, I will see you all next time. Okay, so this is my Orbiter 2 spacecraft. It is the exact same as Orbiter 1, but the service bay is replaced with a Science Junior, or the Material Bay, whatever you want to call them. Um, it flies much the same, except when the booster stages are removed. When that happens, it just loses all control, and with no SAS, it just it flies like a wet sausage. It just doesn't do anything. Um, even after the second stage is removed and just gone to first stage, it still flies like a wet sausage. And just imagining a wet sausage fly, it just this is perfect example of what it, what is happening. Um, but again, no expectations to get it to orbit or anything fantastic. Just get science, get back down to the ground, and yeah, pretty simple stuff. Pretty simple indeed.